Executive Director of the Reading North Reading Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to this episode of Shop Local. Thanks so much for joining us today. I am here in the studio with Francine Coughlin, owner of Bark and Roll. I wanted to welcome you, Francine. Thanks for joining me this afternoon to talk about Bark and Roll and share some of your expertise with about dogs and all the things we do to enjoy those furry friends in our family. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for having me. I love this little shop local thing you got going on. I think it's really important for the community. And as a member of the chamber, I applaud you for getting this going and having this um, be a nice resource for our community. Thank you. And thanks also to NORCAM for hosting us and making sure we stay on track with our programming. Because I yes. know it's, everyone's so busy and I appreciate your taking time out of your schedule. So I remember you have had a business for a long time but you've been at your spot for about a year, year and a half now in North Reading? Yep, I founded Bark and Roll um, in North Reading in 2010, and I uh, had a small training space on Main Street, and then I found a larger space so that I could run not only training, but my daycare and boarding facility out of there um, on 211 Main Street. So we've been there now since um, September of 2016. So time flies, but uh, it still feels new to us every day. But um, but yeah, we're, we're settled in and um, we've taken over a bit more space and we're having a great time there. That's great. Well, I always know when I'm passing your store because I always see your amazingly decorated Bark and Roll van, yeah. usually parked out front, but also the in tour and around bus. the town. Yeah, you see the tour bus bumping around town. So we're picking up and dropping off dogs. We offer a transportation service um, within the Reddings and a little bit of surrounding town stuff if we can swing it, but mostly within the Reddings. Nice. So if people are out at work or traveling, can't be home all day, you'll actually go and pick up their dogs in addition to taking care of them and training them during the day? Yeah, we have a, a wide variety of clients that need these different services. I mean, some of our clients don't drive anymore mm -hmm. um, and still want to be able to send their dogs to daycare um, or to boarding with us. Um, sometimes, you know, people are taking a trip and not getting in until one o'clock in the morning. So we'll drive them home and have their dog waiting for them when they get home from their trip. Um, so, so yeah, that's what, that's what the tour bus is for. Nice. Yeah. Well, I love the way it's decorated. It's very recognizable. Thank you. That was Rap Solutions in Woburn. Um, I have to give a shout out to them because they were excellent. They were awesome to work with. Um, the designer whose name escapes me right now is a female who is awesome and has a rescue dog. Um, she, you know, within two passes, we had the design nailed and I was just floored by how amazing it was and how it was exactly what I had envisioned. And uh, yeah, you can't miss it. It's pretty loud. It's loud and proud. It. It's perfect. <laughs> I think it's fun. The reason why you brand your vehicle is to keep it top of mind. So yep. perfectly executed. Great. Thank you. Um, so tell us more about what you do at Bark and Roll for people who drop their dogs off, the different opportunities to take care of them. So our day-to-day, -day, uh, Monday through Friday, we run our daycare program from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So um, it's a very structured program. We run it sort of inspired by a children's daycare. My daughter is um, almost four and she's been at Over the Rainbow in North Reading. And she, um, I, I kind of took a little, took some pages from their book about how they run the program. Um, she comes home happy and tired and excited to go the next day. So um, I, I think in a lot of ways, now being a mother and a trainer and behavioral consultant that um, young children and dogs can be very similar and need the sort need the same structure and enrichment and rest time um, and play time so um, that children do so uh, what we do is uh, we have drop up in the morning and between seven and nine and then we um, establish our groups uh, we usually have about three or four groups that we keep pretty small um, you know, usually between eight to ten dogs a group, and then we have a supervisor for each group, um, and our manager on staff. So we get the get the groups going with some play time. Obviously, need it, the various potty breaks throughout the day, um, and we do have certified trainers on staff. We have a daily training goal. Um, we send out a weekly training goal at the beginning of the week to our clients via email, and then during the daycare day, we'll work on the structure goal for each day. 
and then we'll let the clients know at the end of the day how the dog did and what we worked on and how to kind of do it at home if there's any products we used um, or any uh, you know, YouTube videos out there or any, anything like that that we can link them to. Um, so it's a way for our clients, even when they're away from their dogs, to know that their dogs are getting what they need during the day instead mm -hmm. of just sitting in a crate at home or sitting at home only. Um, you know, for dogs that aren't social or can't handle the group social environment, we do offer in-home services as well. So, so yeah, that's our day at daycare. We do a lot of, a lot of rotations outside. We have a fenced in play yard outside. Um, and, you know, we, we kind of just rotate around. We have really large play spaces indoors as well. So mm. they've been they've been serving us well so that the dogs can really can really rock out in there. And they also have we have like futon set up and and, you know, rest time and everything for them for, for a structured nap time. Because we noticed that if they don't get that. They get a little overstimulated or some of them just want to be left alone for a little while, which I totally get. It's a lot, mm -hmm. um, a lot of activity going on during the day for them. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I like the fact you guys are so intentional and purposeful with what you do. It's not just like, oh, we'll make sure they don't fight. They do. A, you do a lot more with them than just keeping them safe and sound. Yeah, we don't do the lifeguarding approach where you're, you know, just waiting for an incident to happen. Um, we try to obviously prevent incidents from happening by intervening and, you know, putting a lot of time and thought and effort into forming the groups and making sure that everyone's where they should be. And that and it's fluid as well. Some days, you know, uh, some of the dogs want to be with a more you know, rowdy, playful group, and the other days they just want to chill. So we do rotate and we're flexible. We treat each dog as an individual and try to really shoot to make sure that they're having the best experience possible on a daily basis with us. So um, we've gotten a lot of great feedback from our clients that um, dogs that they didn't think could do certain things or be social and things are, are, are thriving and um, coming home really tired and happy and wanting to come back. So that's that's our that's our goal and the fact that our clients we can inform them about the training aspect of it I think is really important because it you know you do a puppy class for six weeks when you get your dog and sometimes you know it, it just falls off and it's really great to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with your dog and you know sometimes that training time is even you know better uh, stimulation for them and more exhausting and tiring than taking a hike you know so it, it's mm -hmm. nice to be able to do that especially in our winters here on a rainy day to know that you can do some training exercises and enrichment exercises that would be really fairly easy to do with your dog at home. Nice, that's great. So I know that we're taping this and it's winter and people might be watching at a different time of season, but in yeah. the timeliness of what you just discussed, maybe you could give me a couple of examples of what people could do with their dogs sure. at home when the weather's gross or sure. too cold or icy. Sure, um, it depends on your space of course and how many dogs you have. But uh, we recommend puzzle toys big time. And you can actually create puzzle toys on your own. Sometimes if you throw kibble in, a, in an um, empty water bottle, you know, that's enough to keep them uh, you know, interested for a little bit, trying to find a way to bang the bottle around to get the kibble to come out, the small hole. I mean, that's really the idea behind some of the puzzle toys you'll find on, on an Amazon or at a local pet shop. Um, everything but the dog, I think, in Reading carries some of these toys. Um, like uh, the balls where you, they have to roll them around and slam them around to get the cookies out and stuff like that. So those are really good uh, things that challenge your dog um, in order to get the reward. And uh, they learn pretty quickly. So some of them have advanced settings on them, but I, I think mm -hmm. puzzle toys are an awesome way to do it. And, you know, it's interactive for them, but not necessarily, it, it's something, you know, if you're working from home on a snow day or something that you can keep them busy with. Um, I also think, you know, we, we started making these things. My sister-in-law, Meg, is, has been making foraging mats which are basically just woven little mats where you can put little pieces of kibble and things and the dogs have to forage, which is a natural instinct for them as, as if it's grass. Mm -hmm. That's time consuming and something you could keep doing rinse and repeat. Um, that's really cool for them. Um, hiding toys around the house and doing a sort of a find it game and a hide and seek game or hiding treats around the house. Um, that's something they really dig. And even just working on your basic cues, you're, you're, you're running through your sit, down, stay, um, teaching them some tricks and these are all things you can look up online or we can send you, you know, if you're a client, a current client of ours, we can send you some information. We're happy to do that. Um, you know, how, how you can, you know, do some of this stuff. And like I said, they, our clients end up, if you go to daycare regularly or boarding regularly or both, you end up with a very large repertoire for your dogs to be able to do at home with you. So mm -hmm. I think that kind of stuff is really great. And the, the usual one-on-one you know, -on -one uninterrupted snuggling time is good too. You know, once they're tired out, um, that's nice too. 
So there's lot, lots of little things you can do. Plenty of, of crafts you can make too for your dogs at home, like I mentioned, the foraging mat. And sometimes people put a, a bottle in a sock. And the, the local Girl Scout troops made us some really cool um, toys for the dogs with like a water bottle in a sock, covered in a sock mm -hmm. that had like a shaker in it. Like that kind of stuff is, is fun for these guys. And if they destroy it, it's no big deal, right? <laughs> right, right. Pulling the stuff out of the recycling bin to <laughs> exactly, make it anyways. Exactly, exactly. Those are really good ideas. And as you know, I have a dog, so now mm. I have some things that I can try during this rainy, wet weekend. Yeah, which, I think Sky would love that. Yeah, it might not be the best weekend <laughs> for longer walks with the rain coming. Right. Um, so in hearing about all the stuff you're telling about the business and what you do for the dogs, it might make sense for people watching who want to learn more, find out about your intake process, how people would um, become a client or potentially sure. um, meet with you to see if their dog would be a good candidate for your daycare. Sure. Um, our in-home services, it's pretty standard. We, off we offer a complimentary meet and greet in your home. So just to meet your dog and get the routine information and you can meet one of our staff members. Uh, we work very much as a team. So anyone that works with your dog will have been trained by someone who's already met your dog and gone through the routine. So. Um, they won't be going in blind, mm -hmm. um, but uh, so that is just some, you know, a, a meet and greet half an hour and a, and a quick paperwork process. So that's pretty easy. Um, for daycare, uh, we need to evaluate the dogs. Um, there are many dogs that are overwhelmed by a group social environment. Um, it's just not the way we sort of raise our dogs in our culture anymore. Um, we may do, like I said, a puppy class when they're younger and they play, but. A lot of the time, maybe the dog has, you know, a sibling dog or a neighbor's dog that they play with. But as far as like group social and and really reading other dogs' body language and learning how to communicate with various sizes and temperaments and play styles, um, the dogs can get very overwhelmed and confused. We just sort of don't give them the tools anymore because I think we're kind of protective of our dogs as a culture, which is great. But sometimes I think it's a little over, um, and you know, some people have had tough experiences at the dog park and things like that. So there's, mm -hmm. there's just a lot that goes into it. So for us, um, we have people fill out a pretty lengthy application so that we can get all the information possible about their dog uh, before they come in the door. And of course, they need to be vaccinated appropriately, which is it's pretty clear, um, or at least titered. Uh, and then uh, they come in for a minimum four hour evaluation on scheduled day. And they we will bring them in get a feel for the dog and then introduce dogs one at a time slowly once we feel they're ready. Mm -hmm. And then we try to find their groove for the day. But we keep it pretty chill the first day unless they're really, some of these dogs have been to daycare or group social environment and they're ready to go. So, you know, if they're ready to fly, we, you know, of course introduce them um, to, the, to, the more, to the more outgoing and sort of in your face group, which is, you know, some dogs, that's their play style. Um, and they're, and they accept that well and they're ready to go. But a lot of the dogs, you know, on the first day, you know, have the little first day of school jitters and we just kind of move slowly with them. And if they're doing well by around noon, we just let them know they're welcome to stay for the rest of the day. We tell the client and if not, you know, come back and maybe we'll try it out again. If it's not a safety issue, we'll, we'll try it again on maybe a different day with different groups of dogs. Sometimes it's just finding your crew and, and, uh, and you know, some, we're all allowed to have off days too. Sometimes we have a dog come in that's having an off day or had a stressful weekend or a stressful event or something. We just don't really know. And then they come back the next time and they're comfortable. So, you know, it's just kind of, that's, that's our intake process. But we're very communicative and open about whether we think it's a good fit mm -hmm. um, and whether we think the dog should try it again. Some dogs just aren't really into it and are kind of, overwhelmed and frozen and we're like you know what they're really not having a great time maybe you should consider an in-home service mm -hmm. or a small a place that does like maybe you know, sometimes we'll offer one-on-one -on -one play groups not at the facility but in your home so that's mm -hmm. always an option too oh that's good yeah or group walks oh yeah right mm -hmm. So where do you service? Are you primarily focused in North Red So anyone can come to us and we have people coming to us from um, various places, especially for boarding, they'll come from far and wide for that, because um, we do have a wide range of training clients as well um, that already know us. So when we opened up the daycare and boarding, they'll, if they can swing it on their way to work, um, some people work in Boston and we're in the way off 93, so um, they'll swing that. But mostly, our, you know, all our in-home services are generally in the Reddings. Um, I'm from North Reading. I moved to North Reading when I was 12 from Medford. and. Um, I love the town and it's just a comfortable place that I felt, you know, we needed more of these types of services when 
uh, I had moved back from Los Angeles after a career in film, and um, I had been uh, working with various trainers and positive trainers um, in Los Angeles, and decided, you know, you know, why why go into the city? I know there's a market in the city, but it's a it's a very crowded market. Why not do it in my hometown and see and see how it goes? So um, I'm really very much tied to the Reddings. I'm a current resident, and um, and I continue to service them because I, I think, you know, there's plenty of dogs in the Reddings and families that, that need the help and need the services. So um, I'm really not looking to expand further than that for now. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. And there's still plenty of dogs and plenty of families right here <laughs> yes. locally. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's a great community. And a, we have a wonderful clientele. We love our clientele. They're, they're just really caring and obviously invested in their dogs. And... Um, you know, we encourage people to shop around and, and you know, see, see what other businesses have to offer in the community. There are great businesses in our community. And kind of just pick what fits best for you and your dog. And, and you know, it's all about your dog, really, truly. Um, are they excited to go? Does it feel like a good, a good fit for them? So always watch their body language. They, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll know. <laughs> so you mentioned that you had started working with trainers in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about like the different certifications, because I know when I've seen your newsletters, there's like letters after your name. Sure. What do those mean? Um, yeah, everyone kind of just glazes over that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've always been uh, focused on education, continuing education, um, even though my degree is not uh, has nothing to do with animals. It's a, a Bachelor of Science in Film and Television Production um, from Boston University. I, I still continue to crave information about what I do. so. Um, I was actually inspired working on set by uh, these uh, by positive trainers who did clicker training and uh, humane methods with these uh, various species of animals to uh, encourage them to do different things on set in um, some uh, large budget movies I worked on. And um, I wasn't thinking about certification at that time. I was just watching what they were doing and just in awe. I started doing some rescue work in LA just volunteering and I ended up adopting my own dogs and starting to train them under the influence of uh, Mark Harden, who's an amazing trainer in Los Angeles. And he was sort of giving me the basics and I was really interested. Uh, I ended up moving back to Boston for a movie and I thought it might be temporary. I met someone who had just gone through a program called Animal Behavior College, which is actually based in California, oddly enough. And it's a lot of online um, course to get you certified to be a dog trainer. They also have a grooming program and a vet tech program. Um, so they, I ended up applying for Animal Behavior College and doing that, getting matched with a mentor in the area who's no longer here. Her name is Betty Yip, and she was an excellent uh, positive trainer in Arlington. And I ended up working with her, and I got that certification. And then I ended up doing various continuing education and getting further certification. So I have certification through the Council of Professional Dog Trainers. Um, I'm a member of the Association of Professional Dog Trainers. I'm also a member of the International, oh geez, IA, International IAABC, which is the Behavioral Consultant nice. uh, Association. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of letters, and I yeah, even get no, confused. Yeah, no, acronyms are confusing. So yeah, I mean. so I'm a so I'm a behavioral consultant certified as well. So there's um, continuing education and testing, and uh, you need to get in your credits and you know attend various seminars and workshops and things like that over the course of the year in order to renew. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to make sure you're on top of the latest training um, methods and the latest philosophies, and um, there's a lot always going on. It's it's really an evolving an evolving science. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm obviously fascinated by it, and I have a great team of trainers that work with us, and, and we encourage them to do uh, continuing education. We're actually going to a workshop, one of my trainers and myself, in um, Utah at Best Friends uh, Sanctuary, which is a very large, amazing sanctuary in the U.S. that um, has all species of animals. Uh, so, so yeah, that's, that's through the... Uh, Pet Professional Guilds is <laughs> another PPG, <laughs> so um, so that's through them. That's through that organization. So, yeah. Nice. So lots of letters. Yeah, but I think it's great to know that you have a lot of, like, training and knowledge and, and um, science behind all this, not just... Um, someone who loves animals and yeah. you know and, is and and I think it's great for people who love animals to um, to have that hobby. I just think that you know to be in order to be responsible and actually run a business and you know charge money for your services and be trusted, you know rehabbing dogs that might have serious issues or you know 
even supervising groups of dogs, you should have uh, that that knowledge. Not, I, I encourage anyone who wants to work with with dogs, that's what I can speak to, to be certified and to, to seek out that continuing education and to go to workshops and seminars. Um, I think it's really, really important. It is a science. The, what we do with positive training is science-based. It isn't, uh, you know, just some sort of uh, thing we just create as we go along. I mean, we are creative in the ways we approach certain dogs, but um, I think you need to, you know, have, have some knowledge of why certain things work for certain behaviors and, mm -hmm. why, and how dogs learn. It's so important to uh, understand how dogs learn. It's very different than how people learn. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Nice. Mm. Wow, I've known you for a long time and never even knew about that <laughs> side, so I'm learning a lot too. There you go. That's fantastic. <laughs> so I know dogs are your passion, so now tell me a little bit about your, your nonprofit that you've launched more recently. Sure, so in the spring of 2017, um, I founded BNR's, which Bark and Rolls, Rock and Rescue, um, which is a nonprofit 501c3. That's another one where I'm like, 3C, mm -hmm. C3, C3. Um, so we uh, founded that in order. We were doing some fostering and um, rehabbing of dogs that were having trouble at, at various shelters and in, in rescues. So I wanted to sort of be in control from the beginning to the end of the process because it's very hard when there's multiple organizations involved and everybody wants different things and it can be very confusing for the dog as well if they're being moved around and shuffled around during the process. So what we wanted to do was to start our own so where we do the intake you know from start to finish the intake the rehab foster if needed um, and then adopt out to the appropriate family and then also we offer continuing support for the life of the dog so um, we are committed to offering you know a free round of training classes or privates if that's um, whatever is appropriate for the dog and um, just making sure that it's a good match so that the dog doesn't end up being rehomed again or worse. So mm. um, we have had many people in the community come to us about a friend or family member, or someone they heard about a neighbor that needs to rehome a dog um, because of uh, various reasons. And, you know, we try to do a very judgment-free approach and say, okay, if it fits not the right home, let's try to see what we can do to get them in the right home. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there are, there are some people are overwhelmed and they think maybe the dog needs to be euthanized or something like that. And, and um, we try to obviously avoid that at all costs. So we're, we try to come at it as many angles as possible. And we have, once you're in rescue, you're in rescue and you have a large network of, of people who are willing to help all over the country and beyond. Um, mm -hmm. We have contacts in Puerto Rico we've been working with um, to, to, uh, bring dogs up here because they have a very large, uh, stray dog problem. And after Hurricane Maria, it's devastated still there. They're still lacking. I think 50% of the island is still without power, mm. um, and water and they're suffering. And, uh, that's, that's the humans. Um, so you can imagine the dog situation down there is not good. There were 400,000 strays before the storm. Wow. Uh, before the hurricane. So I'm not sure what the count is now. I know a lot of dogs, unfortunately, uh, didn't survive the, the hurricane. But um, so we'll be focused um, on Puerto Rico. But we also, you know, if if someone approaches us from our community or from another state, we try to work and see if, if we can't take them, who can locally. So mm -hmm. like I said, we have a really good network. So that's, that's it. We're in our fundraising phase right now. Um, so we're trying to build up, you know, uh, as much fundraising as possible so that, you know, when we do have a, a transport come in, you know, if the dog were to get ill or anything like that, we have the, the money to make sure that we can follow through and, and give the dog the best care possible um, to get them ready for a home. So, yeah. Nice. That's great. I didn't realize that you make the commitment to the dog. So even if it's not a fit, you're willing to take it back or help the yes. owner with training yep. just to get them both comfortable, hopefully. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we just want we just want all dogs to find the right place, you know, and we want the families to be comfortable um, and not feel, because if it's a bad fit, it's a bad fit, you know, and that's the thing about rescue and that's the thing about anything. Even, you know, I have plenty of families that get dogs from breeders that it's not a good match or there's a behavioral issue and they're out of their league and they just don't have the time um, and, you know, money, you know, to commit to it and maybe they just can't or maybe it's unsafe for their lifestyle. Um, there are some dogs that aren't overly social for whatever reason, and if you have people coming and going all the time in the house, and 
that can be really tough, um, and it can it can be a bad match that way. I mean, there are certainly mm -hmm. we certainly try to step in and try to do management and training first. If the owner uh, wants to be committed, you know, is committed to the dog, some people come to us when it's too late for that, mm. and uh, we need to move fast. So nice. Now I know you had a fundraiser this past fall. Do you mm -hmm. have anything coming up that you'd like to share? We do. Yeah, we have um, at Ebec E B I C more letters, um, mm. it's, which is the energy bar um, and uh, inner cycle uh, on Main Street, just a couple doors down from us. We are having on January Friday, January twenty sixth. I believe it's at 6.30 p.m. It's a Latin dance fundraiser. So one of our trainers, Charissa Koblakova, mm -hmm. um, is um, also a certified uh, Latin dance instructor. And uh, she will be bringing, bringing the tunes in, and we are gonna, we're going to do a Latin dance class. So I invite you to come, Lisa. I'd love to see you uh, shake it with us and um, for a good cause. So it will be a $15 uh, suggested donation at the door and um, we'll have some refreshments and treats and yeah, hopefully it'll be a fun night. That does in sound fun. In the name fun. of rescue. Yeah. Yeah, Way that's to sweat great. it out. It, it, it's fast, it's, it is fast paced, but don't be overwhelmed. You don't need to know how to dance to do it. Um, it's very, it's instructionally based. And basically, I, I can just see it all right now. Everyone's gonna just go with the flow, I think. You know, and this, mm -hmm. it's, Latin dance is not structured. Yeah, so it's like a one hour exercise class? One hour cardio exercise class, yeah. So that's that. Um, as far as large fundraisers, we have coming up a big events. We'll probably just have one or two big events a year. So um, if you want to hear, if anybody wants to hear more about it or how to get involved, we would love uh, anyone who wants to step up to be a foster, um, to foster dogs. We can always use that or volunteer work um, for our various events and fundraisers. Uh, our website is rescueallthedogs.org. Rescue our mission is to rescue plural. all the dogs. Mm -hmm. We're going to rescue all of them. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's, that's that. Uh, what else? Nice. So much, you have such a wealth of information about your specialty. I think it's great. You know, just your continual education and process and commitment and energy. I, I think Thanks. that's awesome. We, we really love what we do and I, and I love to be able to offer a place, uh, for people who also love dogs and want to make a career out of working with dogs and with families um, that have dogs, uh, a place to, to work. Uh, people work for us who have left, you know, full-time like administrative careers or lawyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, have, we have a really wide range of, of humans working for us who are just awesome and passionate and um, many females. Um, I, love, I love the, you know, the girl power that we have going on to a bark and roll. Um, we currently have one male on the staff, <laughs> and he's excellent. He's an excellent trainer. I do sometimes feel it. <laughs> it's unfair to him, but he does really well. He takes it all in stride. <laughs> yeah. But um. But yeah, it's 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 um, it's it's a dream come true for sure for us. That's fantastic. Well, I know I've seen you and worked with you in a lot of different community capacities as well. Just running a business, taking care of all the dogs, and a nonprofit plus everything else. It's um, it's it's commendable. Thanks. It's awesome. it's, I have a great support system, so you know, you know, the hubby is not too not too shabby. He he works two jobs, but he he still finds time to support, and I'm just surrounded by people who are really supportive of what of what I do, and who love their dogs too, and they get it, and they know why I invest so much time into what I do. And like I said, I have an awesome team. You know, my operations manager Sarah Castine is my right hand gal, my left hand gal. Mm -hmm. She's sometimes my both legs and my brain. So. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I couldn't do it without someone like her as well. So I just want to give shout outs to the people who make it happen. It's not just all me. Yeah. Well, it's generous that you do that. You're always quick to credit everyone who helped. So I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Good team effort. Yeah. Um, so for people who are watching, how can they reach you if they're interested in Bark and Roll? I know we talked about if Rescue If they're interested the in Bark and Roll, um, they can shoot us an email through our website, barkandroll.com. That's the easiest way to get in touch with us. It is very difficult for us to be answering the phone all day because yeah, we, it does take away from supervising the dogs. So, And we don't have someone that just sits on the phone all day. Um, so emailing us through the website is a great first step. If not, you can call us, 978-604-2949. That's our uh, office number. Um, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Um, and you know, we are happy to try to find. Excuse me. We're happy to try to find the best fit for your dog within our program. So mm -hmm. you know, we will we'll have an in-depth conversation if you want to schedule a time to talk. 
Nice. And just for people listening who might not know, it's Bark, the letter N, roll, not A-N-D. Yes, it's Bark. It's actually our website is bark hyphen the letter n hyphen roll dot com good um and what was i gonna say i forget but yeah that's how to reach us perfect Mm -hmm. well i just i think that it's great that you get so involved in the community i know you've done a lot for the chamber of commerce um and me as well and and my role within the chamber and you've signed on to be the incoming president in a year which will be really exciting mm-hmm. and um yeah you wear many hats I'm very impressed i try yeah that's try great small head lots of hats <laughs> um we um yeah i mean you know the the chamber is something that drives me i love to be involved in the community and i love to be so close to all the other local businesses that are so passionate about our community and um our chamber is awesome and yeah, I'm, I'm honored to become, you know, to be VP this year um, under an awesome president, another another female um, who's who's making strides. That's right. Um, yeah. So I, I, I can't wait. It's going to be an exciting year next year. Even better. It sure will be. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time and for sharing all those insights about what you've done and your different roles and your career training, but also facility and nonprofit. Well, thanks for having me. You're welcome. And, uh, anyone wants more information or just information about dogs in general, I am always happy to chat. Um, even if you don't need our services, I'm happy to connect you with people who we recommend to if there's something we don't offer or you want you know, various options. We just want to see some happy dogs around here. Absolutely. Well, I know you've helped me with my dog and the, just the handouts and the, the skills and the tools are great. And I was kind of overwhelmed that it was going to be this big thing that I had to spend a ton of time on. But really, with consistency, I've realized. I mean, it's, a lot of the stuff is small doable. takes. Yeah, and a lot of it is just learning how to read your dog's body language. So if your dog is going to react in a certain way, or you know, your dog isn't is having trouble coping with something, is it can be a small tweak in order to redirect them or to teach them the appropriate behavior. So I mean, you you did great. Thank I'm you. Just very proud. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, on we'll that We'll break note. it down and make it realistic. You know, yes, I mean, we understand absolutely. that. You know, each each family is an individual family each client is an individual person so we need to make sure even within a family we work on making sure that everybody has a role that's clear and that's doable so mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like ah right yeah because it can be tricky well, to once you squeeze learn to it all in once you learn to speak dog you have you know a lot of it down nice good well is there anything else you wanted to share? I know we've no. I could talk about... all day about dogs, but no. I think I think uh, the audience has probably <laughs> gotten plenty of information. At no, this I think point. it's all good. I'm glad we were able to get together. Thanks, me too. So thank you so much for joining me again, Francine Coughlin of Bark and Roll, and thank you also for joining us um, again. I'm Lisa Egan with the Ready North Reading Chamber of Commerce. We always have a lot of events, pretty much every other week for the entire calendar for 2018. So to learn more about what we do for businesses and local professionals, go to our website, which is www.reddingandreddingchamber.com. Thanks again for your time and for joining me today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks.